Hello, my name is Brian Morgan, and welcome to our Eat to the Wind series by Dynamic Health and Fitness. Uh, today we'll be discussing macronutrient breakdown, or better yet, uh, the nutrients that we eat on a day-to-day -day basis, coming from protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Uh, the value of today's discussion is simply to give you and then install the value of what protein is, what carbohydrates are, and what fat is, and understanding the relationship between all three of those macronutrients. Uh, understanding that all three work synergistically together, each one relies on one another. Uh, that's most importantly, and that's why we hear oftentimes uh, to have a balance between all three. And it's exact, exactly true. That's why we see oftentimes our fat diets coming and going, because many of them just deplete one of those macronutrients, whether it be carbohydrates, fat, or even protein, and we know that that doesn't work for long-term benefits. All three of these nutrients also help our three subsystems of the body, our nervous system, most important, our articular system, our spine and joints, and our muscular system. We have to value all three of those. We have to look at protein, carbohydrates, and fat from the inside first to understand and to really respect and time manage and plan our day accordingly to get in all three of those nutrients instead of being told what to do to really know why you have to do what you have to do. Uh, let's first begin with protein. A quick uh, education here is that protein has four calories per gram. So if you were to take a hamburger for an example that has 20 uh, grams of protein, simply take 20 times 4 and looking at the number of 80 calories of that hamburger coming from protein. We look at carbohydrates and know that that also has 4 calories per gram. And you can run the same mathematics on any of the food items. We look at fat and we know that fat has 9 calories, the most dense nutrient per gram. So simply put, if it had a, an object had to, a product had 2 grams of fat into it, you would leave it knowing it had 18 calories of uh, fat coming from that nutrient, uh, from that uh, hamburger for example. Let's get back on to protein. Understanding and valuing that protein helps with our internal organs, it helps with our, uh, our hair, our nails. Uh, things that are very important to us, uh, giving us the absorption of protein into our body helps build and repair our muscles, our joints. Uh, it helps with the function of our nervous system at the same time. So we have to really understand that protein isn't just for what a lot of people believe on. Uh, protein is to get bigger and to build up more muscles for a lot of athletes think that way. We have to understand that there are people that are 60, 70, 80 years old and on that are looking for protein basically to get the calcium to absorb into their muscles, into their bones, so they can function and go from point A to point B. And that's looking at protein from the inside out. Protein comes from three systems. It comes from meat, dairy, or poultry. For the most part, protein needs to be cooked. For the most part, yes, you can have milk and just simply pour yourself a glass of milk. But protein is something where you have to really value the importance of planning out your day and cooking ahead of time or cooking on the spot and, and giving yourself enough time to do that. We know that protein isn't best to say, I'm going to cook chicken on Monday, and a lot of it, and have it all the way up until Thursday or Friday. We know that oftentimes the meat doesn't last that long, and also by reheating the protein, it depletes a lot of its nutrients. Protein has, going a little bit deeper, and some of you guys are going to find this very valuable, protein has 22 amino acids that, make, that actually makes protein. Eight of them are essential, meaning that we need to get in uh, eight uh, of those amino acids to unite with the 14 other non-essentials that the body actually makes to complete the chain reaction of what protein does for our body. So a lot of people that say, geez, I don't think I had much of any protein throughout the entire day. We know that those non-essential amino acids that help make up protein aren't even uh, being utilized. The only way protein, and protein is a form of energy, but really gets used on the forefront for energy, is people that go on low carbohydrate diets. The reason why these programs don't oftentimes work is because at that point protein gets used for energy, and that's really not its goal. Uh, remember protein's goal is to help rebuild and build for the body. If it's utilized for energy, then it can't do both things at the same time. So what ends up happening is we deplete our body of the protein, 
and we lower our metabolism. We oftentimes people that are on low carbohydrate uh, fat diets find that they have no energy throughout the entire day, feel sluggish throughout the, uh, towards the end of the night. Let's go towards carbohydrates and making sure that we understand that it's not wise for us to deplete our body of carbohydrates. Is as I said, carbohydrates yield four uh, grams per calorie, and we look at carbohydrates as the quickest source of energy. Uh, we look at carbohydrates in two forms. We look at it in simple or complex, and I like both of those names because simple is put that it simply breaks down quicker. Um, a couple of examples of that would be fruit. Uh, another complex carbohydrate would be uh, wheat bread. For example, if I were to go for a run right now, for a short, quick run for even maybe a mile, let's say, I really wouldn't want to sit there and have a wheat bagel. Instead, I would want to have like a banana or an apple that's going to really break down and get converted into energy at a quick pace, and I can utilize that during my run. Instead, if I were to have a piece of uh, uh, bread or a wheat bagel, there's a good chance I'm going to be running and feeling it in my stomach and like a pit in my stomach and I'm not going to enjoy the run at all. Uh, if you were to go for a longer run, then that's where that bagel would find its place. Okay, why have carbohydrates though? We know it's for the uh, source of energy, but a lot of people find that uh, when they look at energy and they say, oh, is that the energy I use on a day-to-day -day base? And yes, it's true. You can look at energy from the external source, but let's look at it from the internal source, knowing that you're giving your internal organs actual energy to go throughout the entire day. Uh, you're giving your nervous system energy so it can be uh, ready for different challenges that you have throughout the entire day at the same time. Balancing your carbohydrates throughout the entire day is vital so we don't have a yo-yo effect of energy which majority of us have. And we end up uh, putting in uh, stimulants and putting in caffeine at different times out of the day just relying on sugars just to get those quick pick-me-ups, but balancing your carbohydrates by having uh, a combination of simple and complex is a winning formula. So again, carbohydrates are uh, utilized from the inside for energy, most importantly, and to the outside. They're a quicker source of energy from, for the inside and the outside. They help break down and, and they help protein be used, as we told you the importance of protein. Let's now go into fat. Once again, to go back, fat yields 9 grams per calorie. Okay, so it's the most dense form of energy. With that, it takes a while to break down. So it's, well, we look at it as it's our long-term energy. It releases a hormone called CCK that allows us to have that satiated feeling, making sure that we don't need to continuously eat. So that's very valuable. The majority of people that don't have any fat at all find themselves constantly looking for leftovers or what's next, what else can I eat? Uh, so again, fat is dense, it takes a while to break down, it, it's utilized to help you absorb uh, carbohydrates as well as fat, as I said in the very beginning. So without fat, your protein, even if you did a wonderful job of having a lot of protein throughout the day, as well as carbohydrates, it really wouldn't matter if you didn't have much at all of any, car of any fat. Um, fat also helps with uh, absorbing and breaking and down and helping the absorption of calcium for the bones, for the teeth, uh, which we know is, is very valuable at the same time. Um, fat, we, we find a lot of people say, well, well, fat is bad for me, fat gets me fat. And we know that the actual fat that, you're going, that you would get from, let's say, for example, peanut butter, that doesn't get you fat. It's a, uh, a myth. What gets you fat is over consuming too many calorie, calories and not moving enough, but the actual nutrient fat does not make you fat at all. It's as valuable as protein, again, or carbohydrates. Um, there are good fats and there are bad fats that you can consume into the body. Uh, what we want to look at, again, when we look at protein and we look at carbohydrates and we look at fat is making sure that we organize and portion size and plan throughout the entire day to ensure that we have a nice balance between all these three nutrients. Dissecting each one of them and saying I have to have a perfect amount of protein and a perfect amount of carbohydrates in a meal by itself isn't, doesn't show us to be the best benefit. What's more valuable to us is to have our meals balanced on the protein, a nice balanced breakfast, a nice balanced lunch, 